Proper signaling is important for officials at all levels of the game. The specific signals used by the referees are intended to communicate decisions and instructions, so it's vital that these signs be performed clearly and accurately. U.S. Soccer recommends that referees of all levels follow these guidelines to provide consistency and clarity when delivering information and directions to other members of the officiating team, players, substitutes, team officials, and spectators. Throw-in the signal for a throw-in is given while facing the touchline where the throw-in will occur. The arm is raised and extended at a 45 degree angle with the fingers held together. The signal indicates which team has been awarded the throw-in, so the referee's arm should point in the direction of the goal that team is attacking. Once possession of the ball for the restart is established and understood by the players, the referee's arm is lowered. Direct Free Kick the signal for a direct free kick is the same as for a throw-in. Its purpose is to establish which team has possession of the ball for the restart, and accordingly, once this is understood by the players, the arm is lowered. The arm is raised and extended at a 45 degree angle with the fingers held together. The referee's arm should point in the direction of the goal that the team awarded the restart is attacking. Indirect free kick. The signal for an indirect free kick starts with establishing which team has possession. This is done by first giving the same arm signal as for a direct free kick. As soon as possession has been established, then the referee gives a separate signal to indicate that the free kick will be indirect rather than direct. The law requires that the indirect free kick signal be held from when the ball is kicked until the ball contacts another player or play is stopped for some other reason, at which point the signal is lowered. The signal itself consists of the arm held straight upward with the fingers held together. The arm used for the signal should not be the one in which the whistle is held. Goal Kick While facing the goal, the referee signals for a goal kick by holding the arm straight out horizontally with the fingers held together. The signal is lowered as soon as possession for this restart is clearly established. Corner Kick While facing the end of the field where the ball crossed the goal line, the referee signals for a corner kick by pointing in the direction of the corner closest to where the ball left the field of play. The arm is raised and extended at a 45 degree angle with the fingers held together and on the same side of the body as the corner being used for the restart. The referee's body is turned in a slight angle to face the selected corner. Once it is clear that both the restart and the correct corner are understood by the players, the arm is lowered. Advantage Advantage is signaled both visually and verbally. Both arms are brought upward in a swinging motion from below the waist to a point no higher than the shoulders. At the same time, the referee clearly and loudly states either play on or advantage. Play on. <laughs> the referee must not use these phrases or anything which might be confused with either phrase where the application of advantage is not intended. Yellow and red cards. There are two basic scenarios for displaying a card for misconduct. The standard approach used is to collect information from the player to be carded and then, while standing at least an arm's length away, to raise an arm straight upward while holding the card by the thumb and one or more fingers so that the card is clearly visible. The other scenario used is when the referee decides there is a danger of retaliation, violence, or further misconduct if action is not taken immediately. In this case, the card is shown in the same way as in the standard scenario, but as quickly as possible, perhaps even while in the process of approaching the player guilty of misconduct, and only afterward is the necessary information gathered before play is restarted. Anytime a red card is displayed, the action should be followed by a gesture which clearly indicates that the player must leave the field. If a player is issued a yellow card for the second time in the game, the referee puts the yellow card away after displaying it, and only then is the red card displayed. U.S. Soccer recommends that referees keep yellow and red cards in separate pockets so that they can be quickly retrieved without fumbling, dropping, or wasting time to check that the correct color card has been pulled. Whistle to restart play. When a restart, such as a free kick, goal kick, throw-in, or a corner kick must be delayed for any reason, U.S. Soccer recommends that referees give a clear indication to the team in possession of the ball for the restart that it may not attempt to put the ball into play until indicated by the referee with a whistle. This is achieved by verbally stating that the team must wait for the whistle and, in most cases, 
Pairing this with a strong visual indication by raising the whistle no higher than the referee's shoulders or head and pointing to it with the other hand. Because both teams are now waiting for a whistle to restart play, the referee should not use the whistle for any other purpose until signaling for the restart. Substitution When the request for a substitution is signaled by the assistant referee or fourth official, the referee need only provide a clear visual indication that the substitution may proceed. This typically involves the referee waving on the player in question with a beckoning motion. If needed, the referee can clarify this signal with the officiating team during the pre-game conference. Penalty Kick When a penalty kick has been awarded, the referee points with an extended arm, fingers held together, downward in the direction of the penalty mark. This may also be accompanied by a slight, not exaggerated bending forward of the body to clearly distinguish this signal from that for a goal kick. The referee then signals for the taking of a penalty kick with a whistle. Added time. From an angle or distance in relation to the assistant referee or fourth official, the referee indicates with his or her fingers the number of additional minutes of added time. The visibility of this gesture is increased if the hand with the fingers extended is displayed against the referee's shorts or jersey. The message is additionally confirmed by verbalizing the number of minutes while making eye contact with the assistant referee or fourth official. Goal The signal for a goal is for the referee to turn and point upfield toward the center mark. Before signaling, the referee's attention should remain focused on the area in front of the goal to observe player reactions. Next, the referee should make eye contact with each member of the officiating team, specifically with the lead assistant referee, to ensure that no infractions have taken place. Once this has been completed, the referee should signal accordingly. Please be sure to keep visiting ussoccer.com to view additional referee education resources.